Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Walk Show Podcast. This is your host, Walker Near. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at the Walk Show Pod, Instagram, or Facebook at the Walk Show. Um, and you can always email me at walker at the Walk Show Podcast.com. If you like the show, I do ask that you take a moment and either like, rate, subscribe, whatever your podcast listening app lets you do. It helps the show become more discoverable. Uh, and also, just, you know, if you enjoy the show, uh, I tell a friend, tell someone else that, that hasn't listened to the show, you know, about an episode that you found interesting and, and maybe see if they'd be interested in giving it a spin. I also want to shout out my other podcast, Pick Up Your Sticks, which is co-hosted by myself and Brett Lindley. Pick Up Your Sticks is a podcast about video games, but instead of just doing news or reviews and that sort of stuff, Brett and I really try and, and have, you know, long kind of thoughtful conversations about why gaming matters, you know, to us and then also to, to society at large. Um, if you like gaming, then I think it'll be right up your alley because we talk about every, <laughs> all sorts of aspects of gaming. Uh, I also want to mention Ozark's Food Harvest. Uh, as I state usually every time, I think, uh, Ozark's Food Harvest and I have no official relationship. They, have, uh, they don't know, I'm sure, that I <laughs> say this on the episodes. But um, either way, Ozark's Food Harvest is a, a charity organization that I feel very strongly about. Um, it's a food bank here in southwest Missouri that helps provide meals to needy families in the area. It's a really efficiently run organization um, and a, a really, just a really, a really, a really well run and, and an organization. I, I've personally had the opportunity to volunteer there a few times and the, and the people there are wonderful and it's just really cool what they're doing. I mean, they, they churn out tons and tons of food to provide for, for people that are in need. Um, if you don't live in Southwest Missouri, then I really encourage you to find your own local food bank and see kind of what opportunities there are. But either way, if you know if you're have an opportunity to 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 donate some time or some money to to give back, I highly recommend if you don't already have a cause to to look into the local food bank because it's a a pretty important one that that I think everyone can believe in. Um, Really, on today's show, I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, excursions that I've had recently, kind of to, to wrap up the new year, or excuse me, <laughs> the previous year, uh, going into the new year. Um, but yeah, just a couple of uh, uh, things I went and did that I thought were pretty enjoyable. And um, as always, today's show, is, the music is by Misha Zarin, so thank you, Misha, for the music. And yeah, let's get on to the show. The first uh, event that I went and did that I wanted to talk about is it was a, a few days before Christmas. Uh, me and a friend went to the uh, there's a park here where I live. Uh, for those of you that are local here, the Nathaniel Green Park, and, and it within it has a Japanese stroll garden, uh, which throughout the year is a really heavily manicured um, kind of Zen garden that has just a, a wide variety of flowers and plants and is, is very well maintained. Um, well, during right around the holiday time, I think it starts maybe after Thanksgiving and runs, you know, through the end of December, uh, on the weekends at the Stroll Garden, they actually put up a light display, um, and hang lights over not every single tree, but a lot of the trees and, and then just have some, you know, standalone light displays. Um, and I think it's five bucks to get in. So not expensive at all. Now it's also not huge. I mean, we have a, a theme park, uh, about an hour away from where I live that has, you know, a million lights, literally, I think is what they advertise that they put up. And it's a, you know, it's a big theme park. And, and so it, it's a very extravagant kind of experience, which I'm sure is also really cool. I haven't actually been to that one, uh, but I would like to go. But it's very, from friends that have gone, their accounts, it, the, the bigger theme park light show is um, is very satisfying and cool, but is also jam-packed with people, Um and just a, you know, there's just a lot, just a lot of, of <laughs> hustle and bustle going on, if you will. Um, whereas this light show that I went to at the Stroll Garden was just a lot more low key. It was a lot more laid back. Um, it didn't, um, it, it didn't have overcrowding at all. I mean, there was plenty of people there, which was cool. Um, but it wasn't, you know, you weren't being pushed up again against, there was no line to wait in to get in. Um, but yeah, it was just a really cheerful and pleasant experience at the at the Japanese Stroll Garden. The light displays were really cool. They had a wide variety of um, of I guess light designs on the trees. You know, so you had things from just solid colors to 
kind of what I grew up with, which is the multicolored, you know, line or, or string of Christmas lights that alternates, you know, between several colors with each light. Um, and yeah, just, just a very kind of quaint and, and, and charming experience. Um, they had this really cool swan that was that was made out of lights that, that I thought was really cool. Um, they had this Zen rock garden, which is like a, just an area where the, it's just a, a garden of, of you know little stones, but that are raked in a very intricate kind of pattern. Uh, I have don't know who does that, but it it's very cool looking. But in the middle of that rock garden, they had just this one solo tree. Um, with kind of a unique light light display on it. I, I want to say it was like gold and purple, but it was it was just really, really, really cool. Um, and it was just the not just the lights, though. It was also just, you know, the, the atmosphere. There were families from, you know, single moms with their kids to, um, you know, larger families with you know both parents and, and a few kids and uh, grandmas grandpas and aunts and uncles and there were young couples and old couples and there was one couple that was actually a young couple but <laughs> from a distance it looked like the dude was like 70 and and that the girl looked appropriately young i mean she looked like she was a teenager you know maybe early 20s um so she looked from a distance like her age <laughs> the person who i thought was 70 actually also turned out to be in his early 20s and didn't actually look old at all. He just had very white hair, but not like... I mean, it was almost just like a platinum blonde uh, and glasses. And yeah, from far away, it just looks <laughs> looks like he was a, a very elderly man. But he was not. But either way, it was just a... Uh, it was a very charming little experience. Um, they had hot chocolate and, and coffee that you could you could get and kind of stroll around and sip on. Um, and yeah, you know, I personally, a lot of times am not eager to be in a place like that where there's a bunch of, of small children, uh, just because, you know, the shrieking and just their <laughs> energy can be a bit overwhelming, but there was none of that. I mean, there was a lot of little kids there, which, which is cool, but they were all really engaged in, you know, in being at the park and, and with their, their families and stuff. And so it was just a really, really pleasant, cheerful experience, um, they have this. They have a, a really small little pond and kind of a building. It's like a I don't know, like a little meditation room or something. But this little building that kind of sits out on the pond, and so they, there's a tiny little bridge that kind of goes out to that. And they had lights all on the bridge and out on the little, you know, pad out in the water. And uh, it was just it was just a really really pleasant experience. It really captured um, the Christmas feeling that that I was looking for. You know, it was serene. It was cheerful. The lights were really pretty, uh, but it also wasn't overcrowded, and it wasn't, it wasn't, um, I don't know if decadent would be the right word, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't too much at the same time. And now maybe there's not such a thing as too much, I don't know, again, you know, I, I am interested in going to that theme park light show, especially now after having seen this one, to see what that would be like, but I have a feeling that it won't be quite as tranquil as uh the stroll garden was which i personally you know really enjoyed um but yeah it's it's the first time i'd ever been to anything like this and i i realize i'm always late to the game on stuff that everyone else already knows about or has done or seen so <laughs> fair enough but uh but yeah and i also realize we're now past the holidays and so <laughs> i'm giving you advice that you can use 12 months from now um, but, but yeah, you know, when it gets to the, that time of year again next year, if you haven't been, I highly recommend that you look in your area and see if there's any sort of park or, or theme park or whatever it might be that will have, you know, a light display, uh, and go check it out because it was, a, a I was really, really pleasantly surprised. I mean, I didn't think it was going to suck or something, but I, I don't know that I anticipated it would be as, as much fun as it, as it truly was. Um, so yeah, good on the light shows.
And the second event I wanted to, to share about is I recently took a trip to Colorado um, to go visit a friend out there for New Year's Eve. Um, and it was it was really an awesome experience. Um, I drove. Uh, the flights out there were a little more expensive than I was interested in paying. Um, so I decided to drive. And I was pretty intimidated by by the drive and, and a couple of days out I left on uh, on a Sunday I think it was the Friday before that I uh, I got some pretty cold feet about the whole thing I, I found myself kind of dreading the Sunday was coming up and dreading that drive because uh, I've, I've never really driven that distance you know and for that long by myself before uh, I've taken one other trip that was about a similar length of time, but I had another person with me and they drove most of the time. So, you know, pretty different. Um, and also the drive to Colorado from Missouri is pretty tough because you drive, you know, east to, well, yeah, east to west and backwards on the way back, obviously, but through Kansas. Um, and Kansas is a pretty boring state to drive through. There's not, there's, there's not a, a ton going on. And to be fair, it's not like Missouri is super exciting to drive through, but at least there's, you know, woods. Um, whereas in, in Kansas, it's mostly just fields and a lot of plains. Although one thing I did think that was interesting about the, the plains of Kansas is that because there's no trees and because it's, you know, relatively flat, you can kind of just see the horizon line in any direction. Um, which is kind of a unique thing. You don't really get that here where I'm from because there's just at some point there will be woods <laughs> in the direction that you look in. Um, now you could go, I'm sure to a farm that is large enough and, and get a similar experience, but yeah, it was, it, it, it wasn't so bad. Um, enormous windmills in Kansas as well. I hadn't, um, hadn't remembered that that was going to be a thing. I went to Colorado once when I was in like middle school. Uh, so I was probably 12 or 13 and, and we did the same drive but it was mostly at night, and I I didn't, yeah, I just forgot that those giant windmills are there. But they're huge. There's, you know, <laughs> at any one time you see dozens at a time, but across the state there has to be thousands because there's just, there's there's so many. And they're not fancy windmills like you would see, you know, like old-timey. They're just, you know, the, the big vertical beam and then just a... a, a three propellers, and that's it, and it just spins. And at night it's kind of kind of spooky maybe spooky is not the right word but i don't know um but at night when you drive by these windmill farms you don't you can't really see the windmills because you know it's pitch black out there but they all have on their axle these little red led lights just right on the nose of it and so when you drive by a field at night like that you just see all these red lights just kind of intermittently blink every six seconds or so. And I don't know if it's exactly that, but, but pretty quickly, uh, but they're not all in sync, you know, so it's not, it, it's just kind of, it kind of looks like a bunch of fireflies, <laughs> except it's red LEDs. Um, but yeah, it's just these giant windmills anyway. Um, so yeah, I drove 12 hours each way, uh, about 1600 miles total round trip. So, uh, it was, it was my, <laughs> my great adventure that I set out on. Um, I went and stayed with some friends uh, that were, were gracious enough to host me and, and, and have me out there for a few days. Um, I'm not going to get caught on anything, but I will say that we did go to a, uh, a special store that is um, not unique to Colorado, but not available in Missouri, uh, although now is available in several states. But Colorado is the first to have this type of store. Um and yeah, that was a really interesting experience. It was kind of like going to a liquor store, except for, not for liquor. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was very bizarre. It was, it was bizarre to see that interaction with no, with no Ill illegitimacy to it, you know, with nothing illegal about it and with nothing, <laughs> nothing to be afraid of, um, yeah, it was it was really interesting. Really highly regulated. Um, I was surprised at, at how regulated it is. I mean, you know, at a liquor store, certainly they're going to ID you when you get to the counter, but otherwise you walk into the store and it's just a store. But at this special store, um, I mean, they take your ID up front and actually just take it when you walk in. When you walk in, you walk into a lobby that's separate from the actual shop, if you will. 
Um, and then they take your ID and they hold it until you leave. And then that's when they, they return it to you. So yeah, it was, um, it was, it was a, it was an interesting thing. It was interesting to be able to leave that store and drive it back across town and not, not be worried about anything. I don't know. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Um, but yeah, so I get there, uh, hang out with the, my friends, go to the special store, um, go and get some pizza at this great pizza place. It's like a little pizza pub. Uh, it was a really cool, cool little spot. Really, really good pizza. Uh, and then the next day, uh, just kind of hung around. My, my friend that I was visiting um, was, wasn't able to take PTO uh, at that, that time. So he, he was working a lot of the day. And uh, we went and got some lunch, had some really, really dope burgers at this place called Snarf Burgers in, in Denver. Um, so highly suggest Snarf Burgers if, if you're there and, and haven't checked it out or if you're headed that way. Uh, they've got one that I got that had green chilies on it Ugh, to die for. Anyway, um, so really on the Monday, we just kind of hung around and, and joked and talked and chilled. and I don't know, just, just kind of kicked it and had fun. And then on Tuesday, which was on New Year's Eve, um, we went to the mountains and drove around the mountains for probably a good five hours and it was it was amazing. Um, we went. I think the first place we went was the Continental Divide, which is the the point in which the it's where the river, the direction that the rivers flow is is separated, right? So, depending on which side of the divide the river is on, determines which ocean that river is going to ultimately flow towards. Um, that was really cool. I did uh, <laughs> the way the Continental Divide works is you park, and then there's a set of wooden steps up this little hill kind of to get to the top of a peak so you can kind of see out over everything um so i took the wooden steps up well then to get the last little bit of the way it's just a hill well given the time of year everything's covered in snow and and then some of that snow is kind of packed down into an ice like thing you know um and yeah i definitely slipped and fell trying to go up the little hill after i got to the top of the steps i didn't hurt myself at all just fell forward (laughs) uh did try and stand back up immediately had no traction and just continued sliding down the hill. And I will admit, I did think maybe this is the end. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I slide all the way down the mountain and never stand back up. It turns out that the the road that we drove in on was pretty much behind me. So highly unlikely that I was actually in any real danger, but um, I don't know. You just, you know, you just don't want to not be able to stand back up when you're on the top of a, a snowy mountain. Um, anyway, get stood back up. I'm not going to try and go anymore on the ice because I'm not going to make it. And then turn back around to go back down the wooden steps. Well, the wooden steps are also covered in, you know, some snow and ice. And see this other man going down the steps and, you know, great, I'll watch him go. Well, about halfway down, he looks like he, you know, like a cartoon character that stepped on a banana peel. I mean, he is all, you know, both hands, both feet up in the air entirely and then just smashes on his back right onto this rock that was right there next to the step he, he had tried to, to go on. He did bounce back up almost immediately. Uh, I think it knocked the wind out of him because he was he was doubled over, and then he would like stand straight up and kind of hold his back. And he kind of tried to make his way down the steps, but uh, and again he he was walking around, so I think he was. You know, I hope he was okay. Um, but that terrified me <laughs> to see that. I I personally am not uh, great at balance, uh, especially when it comes to ice. And I was already a little timid about the whole scenario. But then after watching that, it was just like, well, I've just witnessed my own fate. Um, so it took me a bit. My buddy that I was with was <laughs> not as impressed with the rate at which I descended the stairs. Uh, but I told him tough stuff. Uh, when I got to the stairs that the man slipped on, I definitely um, thought about just trying to hunker down and get low, so you know I would have a little better balance. And then ultimately, just decided to just go ahead and sit down and, and just just kind of scoot <laughs> down to the next step where it was because it was really only that one step that he fell on that was that was really tough. Um, but yeah, so suffice it to say, I you know barely escaped tragedy at the continental divide you know like a like a great adventurer would um but yeah we drove around after that went to to, to several other locations i, I want to say we went to a place called copper um i know that we went to red rocks which is a, a 
amphitheater that they've got there that hosts really big concerts. And it's crazy. I mean, you just, it's these huge red rocks, hence the name Red Rocks. But I mean, I, I have no idea the, the, the scale. I mean, obviously you could Google it, but they're enormous. It, it's, it's truly shocking how big these rocks are. And then they've just got a, an arena, not an arena, but a you know stadium seating and a stage just right in the middle of, of these, these two huge rocks. And it's gorgeous. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely gorgeous. You know, I've only ever really been to concerts at, at either large arenas or um, a, a couple of smaller concert, you know, theaters. Um, and they're cool. The arenas are okay. But the, like the theaters I've been to are pretty cool. But man, I, I, I really hope to go see a show at Red Rocks at some point. And really, I hope it's Tool. Um, cause that would just be, you know, just be awesome. And it's really cool. How you, like you park and you have to walk up this pretty significant ramp that kind of hugs the rocks, but then ultimately eventually kind of goes out into just over the open air to connect it back to, you know, the, where the actual theater is. So it's kind of a kind of a little jaunt to <laughs> just to get up into the amphitheater. I think if I go see Tool or something there, I'll probably uh, probably try and arrive a little early so I can take a few rest stops uh, on the way up the old the old ramp there. Um, but yeah, just a super super cool place and and by far the coolest theater that I've I've personally you know seen. Um, we also went to the uh, Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forests. Went to the Arapaho Ski Basin. We went to Keystone, um, and yeah, it's just it it, it it was just so cool just driving all around. Now I didn't drive, so that also probably made it better because I was being chauffeured. But we just drove all around the mountains and just looked at just you know all sorts of stuff and saw you know all sorts of different. I guess they're called ski parks or I, I don't know mountains where people are snowboarding and skiing. And it's just like, you know, I'm from Missouri and I've never traveled there, so I've never really seen that. And yeah, it's just it's just funny to see, you know, because we're pretty far away from it, actually, you know, out on the, the road or whatever. But it's just funny to look down or look over and on this mountainside see these <laughs> these giant groups of people. And they're all just kind of, you know, just going down the mountain. And it's not it's not like they're all in the Olympics or something. So it's just a bunch of people just going down the mountain over and over again and i don't know it, look, it, it looks like a lot of fun uh i probably am not <laughs> not in shape right now to be snowboarding or skiing but I, I certainly can get there but uh yeah looked really looked really fun um and yeah i don't know you know you go to the mountain and you know around here obviously like i've said there's a lot of woods and, and forests and stuff so it's certainly not hard to go and feel humbled by nature you know you can go stand next to a a, a large tree or, or go see a river or go see even one of our large lakes and, and kind of understand, you know, that how, just how big some things are and how long some things last and how small <laughs> and fast our, our time is, as, as humans, you know? Um, but you go out to the Rockies there and man, like, you know, <laughs> now I've never seen a redwood tree, so maybe that would, <laughs> maybe I'd feel a little diff bit different, but probably not because these mountains are crazy. Like it, it's just, it's, they're just so, for lack of a better term, just majestic. Like they're just so gorgeous. And I really want to go back sometime when it's not the winter, just to see the difference, to see what it looks like when it's the mountains are just covered in, in forest and green. Because now, of course, everything's mostly covered in snow, which I love. I'm a huge snow fan, so was excited by that. But yeah, it was um, it was it was really cool. Really love the little quaint mountain villages that are that sit at the bottom of these mountains, and there's just all these little houses, and they all have their snow covered roofs, and they all have smoke coming out of their chimneys, and I don't know. It was uh, I would. I think I would like to live in, in one of those little <laughs> little mountain villages like that. Um, it would just be, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's just like a like a scene from a movie or something. Like, I, I don't know. I've just never seen anything that, that adorable, frankly, as far as a, a little town layout. Um, on the way back, we stopped at, at one of the little mountain towns, and they had a, a place called Ozzy's Ice Cream. Um, 
and you go in and it, it it's the the tiniest little store it's got it doesn't have a commercial front door even you know that you would see on any store or gas station or business it's uh instead and it's not even like a front door that you would have in a house it's just an internal door like you would have to like a bedroom and it's just got a little handle on it and i mean you pull the door shut and latch it when you when you leave um but yeah it's just got you know old ozzy is in there and uh he makes coffee and and hand dipped uh, ice cream cones and then he also makes milkshakes you know straight from ice cream not from a, a milkshake machine with a mix or something like you would get at like a mcdonald's and yeah it's just absolutely fantastic and it was just a, kind of the perfect little bookend to our mountain excursion um i've seen the ocean uh, only once um but it was it was it was definitely also you know breathtaking and, and, and cool but i feel like i'm maybe more drawn to the mountains than i am to the ocean uh, but I think that might be because of my affinity for snow. I just, I love looking around at, at, at the pristine untouched snow and especially on the mountainsides. I mean, it's just, you know, just huge, huge amounts of snow. That's just completely untouched where you look up on a peak and you see the wind blowing and, and you just see this like mist of snow coming off the peak and it, it just looks really cool. Um, a couple of times we looked up and, you know, really, really far away from us up on the top of a ridge. And you just see like two little people just, you know, navigating the <laughs> the ridge at the very top there. Um, I don't know. It was just a really, a really cool, cool kind of experience. Either way, uh, I, I cannot suggest Colorado enough if you've not been. Great place for a vacation. Mountains are awesome. If you are capable of skiing or snowboarding, probably that is a ton of fun. Uh, they have a snowmobile park, which I think the next time we go, I go out there, I'm going to try and hit up. I think you need to make reservations a bit in advance, but that would be quite a bit of fun and requires zero athletic ability to to sit down on a, a snowmobile. So I'll probably look into that. Uh, and I also just want to say, you know, New Year's Eve after we, we did that, we went, and I have no idea if these people will ever hear this, but <laughs> we went to uh, another couple's house um, that was hosting a little New Year's Eve party. Uh, Dylan and Sammy, and they were just just two of the sweetest people. Um, they were really, really gracious hosts. We we sat and played cards against humanity and had a great time. Um, and and yeah, they had awesome food. That the Dylan, the guy, he'd smoked a couple of different meats, and they were incredible. They had homemade chips and guacamole and nacho cheese. And Sammy, the the lady who lived there, she is a baker, you know, as a profession. So homemade bread. And it was just, it was just so all so delicious. Um, and yeah, it was just a really fun, fun time. And so I also, you know, will conclude by saying thank you to my friends. You know, I got kind of cold feet, like I said, at the beginning, a couple days out and, and I had a couple of friends I talked to about it and they really pushed me to just kind of just, just go, you know, just go. And because I don't ever do stuff like this. I don't ever go on, on trips like that. And, um, I'm really grateful that they that they pushed me because I was having second thoughts and was hesitant and they kind of helped me shake out of that and, and kind of reframe it in my mind as a um, yeah as an adventure and that's that's how I looked at it you know honestly both for the for both drives as well you know like when I was packing my stuff on in the morning that I was returning I. Uh, instead of dreading that, like, okay, I've got 12 hours, this is going to be a grind, I was just like, all right, time for the last leg of the adventure, you know, like, let's get it, and, uh, and yeah, the, the whole thing was great, it was a, a perfect little vacation, it was really fun to go see those friends, it was really cool to go see Colorado and see the mountains, um, it was fun going to the special store, <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just, it, it was, it, it was just a really great little break, um, I've been on PTO from my day job for a couple of weeks and, and so I went in the second week of that vacation and uh, really glad I went really grateful to my friends for hosting me grateful to my friends for encouraging me to go and just grateful that I've gotten to a place in my life where I had the opportunity to do such a thing because it was it was a great time but uh, yeah if you, if you have a chance definitely check out Colorado and, and, and get into those mountains Denver is a really cool city so uh, yeah get out there and have a good time with it
Well, that is going to do it for today's show. Uh, Thank you again to my friends for hosting me. Thank you, my friends, for the encouragement. And as always, thank you to Misha Zarens for providing the music for the show. Uh, And listeners, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great week. Stay up.